the writing process for Parallels was pretty frustrating, actually. I had written the first couple songs at home and was having a lot of trouble progressing from there. I was having a lot of writer's block and second-guessing myself and just thought maybe for a change it might be a good idea for us to get together as a band and uh, write that way. I had some ideas that weren't finished and Frank had some ideas. You know, what if we all get together in one place and work on the music in one place and we'll just see what happens. It was a big experiment. On the previous album, Perfect Symmetry, we were, we were all over the country, you know. Me, Jimmy Frank right here, and Mark was in California, and Ray was somewhere. Uh, Texas, I don't know. But um, me, Jim, and Frank would get together at Frank's father's barbershop just to uh, hash my gears out. Uh, and then we'd mail tapes, you know, back and forth, California, wherever. So this being all together was was, uh, was different. We wrote and recorded in Toronto basically because we were all in different parts of the U.S. at that time, so we knew we were some of us were going to have to travel anyway. And with Terry in the mix, we thought it might be better for us to travel rather than bringing Terry into the States for two months or whatever and, uh, and paying for that expense. We decided we'd all take a vacation and go to what we thought would be six, eight weeks in Toronto and what ended up being, for some of us, uh, I think the better part of six months. The band was on both coasts of the United States and uh, made more sense for them to come to Toronto, meet halfway as it were, and it meant that I was in town all the time, so for rehearsals I could be there and we had questions about um, the way things were progressing, we could, you know, confer on that. And um, also, it didn't mean we didn't have to go traveling to go into pre-production. We could just sort of continue on from the writing phase and go straight into pre-production. So that worked out really well. I think I was up there. I'm trying to remember. I, I went up there quite a bit. I was probably up there maybe four or five times. And this was also, you know, we had our distribution with Warner Brothers. So I remember we brought up the Warner's A&R guy at one point, Rob Cavallo, who went on to, you know, do Green Day. And, Google Dolls and all this stuff, so, you know, he came up one time to listen to everything, so it, it was a fun, I mean, the whole, the whole process, as I remember, it was a lot of fun every time I went up to Toronto, we all had a great time and hung out, and the process went along pretty well, so it was, even though it was long, uh, to me, looking back on it, it was really pretty easy, and I was really happy with the results, it was, it was fun to be up in, in Toronto. Uh, the album was recorded at a studio called Metalworks in Toronto, um, I believe it was owned by the Numbers of Triumph at the time. A great studio in Toronto. Terry suggested it. Uh, he was familiar with all the gear there in the room. Great sounding drum rooms. After we finished pre-production, we went into Metalworks Studios to record. And I remember it being a, a, an interesting process. We had uh, a lot of gear to set up. And uh, Mark's drums were quite a challenge in themselves. He had a lot of, a lot of drums and uh, a lot of triggers and uh, we were running to click and it was, it was fairly complex but he was well organized so that really helped and uh, the process was was a lot of fun we, um, I always remember with Jim writing down and keeping a really close track on his guitar settings for different tunes so that we knew if we had to go back and repair anything somewhere down the road um, he could find those parts really easily those, those sounds and uh, just plug them in and we were ready to go. So it was a, it was a good process. The recording was a lot of fun. We, we worked hard, we worked seven days a week. We worked from like noon until two in the morning. And uh, short of having you know, dinner break, it was just, um, that's what we were there for. In terms of the recording, I mean, it was such an easy record to make. Terry Brown was phenomenal to work with. You know, we're all huge fans of his and he was a great guy and really was, I mean, there was almost no problem at all in the production and mixing it. It was really easy for me. I listened to it and go, yeah, sounds great. <laughs> I, think, I think I went up there when they were uh, finishing the mix and I listened to the mix and I was like, wow, that sounds uh, pretty good. So, uh, you know, I, didn't, I don't think I did hardly anything on, on that because uh, Terry did such a great job. That's 
one of my favorites. To this day, it's one of my favorites. Um, it's heavy. Um, I really enjoy playing it. And I, I enjoy playing the solo in it. You know, it's one of the things that's awesome. Life in Still Water was one of the last songs written for the record, I believe. I remember Brian Slagle coming up to one of our rehearsals and us playing most of the new material for him. And, and I believe he really enjoyed it, but at the end of it he said, you know, you've got a lot of slower material on there. You guys could use something that's a bit more uh, up-tempo and rocking all the way through. So Life in Still Water was kind of an answer to that for us. Life in Still Water was one of the first songs that I started using the electronic drums on. And I think it had a big impact as far as the power and uh, the dynamics of that song. I think that's one of the um, heavier songs on the record. And again, it, it still has movement to it, it still has groove to it, has great vocals to it, and it has just a lot of power. As long as I ran out of time singing when I had to leave, I was in the studio one night for probably 14 hours, 16 hours. All night long, the sun came up, and I had to take the car back to the airport. The guys were already gone. It was just me and Terry. <clears throat> so Terry had this idea of like, well, because we wanted to do harmonies. So he had the idea of, what about James Labrie, who had just joined the band Dream Theater? Maybe I can get him to do harmonies on the, on the, on the song. I just, you know, that, that would be great, because I had heard his voice, and I liked his voice. So once I was gone, James came in and did harmonies to that. So, so that actually made it even Well, the other would go, it tends to just... Yeah, it's long, long, long. 